Thank you very much. Okay, everyone, welcome to the uh, March 6, 2024 Urban Forestry Commission. Um, we have a quorum. It's great to see you all. Sue, I think you can hear us, right? Yes, I can. Okay, I just I'm, didn't have I'm, time for lunch, so I'm, I'm sorry. Just you can shut the camera off as long as we know you're there. All right, awesome. Okay, um, thanks. Public comment. Oh, the meeting's being recorded, by the way. Public comment, Kent. Yeah, just very quickly, I did send out an email letting you know I updated the tree planting report and the priority planting report with um, the 2023 planting. Um, I don't think there's anything super noticeable notable in there, but if you're specifically interested in, you know, how we're doing on percentage of maples in the urban canopy or something that would change a little bit with the new data, um, it's there. The old reports are also available. If you just change 2023 to 2022 in the URL, you'll get the old ones. Mm -hmm. um, I did add one map or add to one map. The last map in the priority report now has a layer that you can turn on that shows all of the urban canopy. So it includes the Davy tree inventory. So you can get kind of the big picture of where all the, the um, trees under your jurisdiction are. And there's also a layer that shows places where there's less than 20% canopy coverage, according to the um, multi something land use consortium, the, the maps that I've made using that tree canopy data. I'm not sure it's that interesting. They're mostly, you know, agricultural fields and places with big buildings like Cooley Dickinson um, but I, I was talk, talking to Rich a while ago, and it seemed like it might be helpful for looking at places where we you want to try to find planting sites. Um, but you have to use some. It, it's not it's not directly useful, just as it is. You have to know, okay, these are fields, and there's a hospital, and that. Um, that's it. Yeah. Did you have a question, Molly? I have a comment. I, I was just looking at that map. If you overlay it onto the um, ortho photo, then you can see if it's on top of a field or a neighborhood or whatever. Right. right. That's definitely helpful. And I had a question about it. So it's made up of those little red squares. Is that the unit that they're looking at to see if each little square has 20% in it? Yeah, that's from the data that I did the overall tree canopy report with it's 30, 30 meter squares. Okay. Um, and I did put, there's an aggregation in there that shows the numbers by uh, by precinct and ward. Um, mm -hmm. So you can see that, well, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago when, so that if you wanna see an aggregated number, you can look at that. And I'm thinking about doing it by um, census block groups too, but I'm not sure that's that different. Just to try to figure out what's a reasonable neighborhood to aggregate over to get. Mm -hmm. Something that's bigger than 30 meters square, but maybe smaller than the um the voting wards, which and precincts, which some of them are kind of big. Excuse me, Kent. Are is the yeah. 30 meter square the census block? No, census blocks um correspond to physical things like streets mostly. Um and they vary quite a bit in size also. The, the 30 meters, that's the unit that's in the, um, I forget, M, multi, the land consortium data that I've been using for land use and tree canopy analysis. Got it. Thank you. It's derived from, I don't know, remote sensing data of some kind. Thank you, Kent. You're welcome. As always. Thank uh, you. Our next agenda item would be review and approve the minutes of the previous meeting. So I'll give folks time to look that over. If they hadn't, just let us know when you're done. Let uh, let me know when you're done. That'd be great. Thank you. Rich, um, I did read them. I just had a quick question. Yep. Do you want to, is it about the, what's in the minutes? It's about a person who's listed, Sand's last name, and I'm just not clear about their role because I have seen them in meetings before. Yeah, why don't we why don't, you, why don't we let folks read them and then when we actually have a discussion during the vote, 
we can just bat that around if you're okay, if you don't mind. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> Um, I have one comment, little minor correction. Yep. You want to wait till, do you want to just wait till the discussion? Oh, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm done. Are other people done? Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. I know silence, right? <laughs> uh, could I have a motion to accept the minutes as presented? Just, uh, just one mistake that I noted, which is that I was not present at the last meeting. Uh, and, and I think that a Check should have been uh, next to Rich Parish. Okay. See that? I, I didn't even catch that. Good. Thank you, David. Sure. Do we do the motion before the discussion? No, or after? no you might as well just, we've already started. So go ahead. It's fine. It was just under the setback um, planting program where it says um, um, about a pilot program. It should just say, a shrub planting pilot program. Hmm. And uh, Jordan, I believe you had a comment as well. Th yeah, thanks. It, was just, it was a question under attendees. It said Jacqueline, and I've seen them appear before. I didn't see their last name, but I'm not clear as to what their role is. Uh, they're they were members of the public, so they they get listed uh, in the minutes if there's not too many members of the public. Because typically, when you have public comment, members of the public have to raise their hand and they have to identify themselves, and then that's how we capture their names. Sure, uh, I just wasn't. What is their last name? Yeah, it's her name is Jacqueline McCreener. I can get you. Uh, I can actually forward Bonnie the. Uh, uh, the last, her last name, uh, McCreener. I don't quite know how to spell it and I don't dare do it, but I will send you, uh, in an email. I think it's good if it's included. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. Thanks, Jordan. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you for, thanks for pointing that out. I missed that as well. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, does anyone else have any other comments? Okay, could I could we entertain a motion to accept the minutes as amended? I'll move to accept the meeting minutes as amended. I will second. All right, we have a second. Any other discussion on the amendments? 
Seeing none, Bonnie, could you please do a roll call? Sure, Rich. Uh, yes. Susan? Yes. Molly? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. David? Uh, should I vote yay or nay, given that I wasn't there? You, you can. It's it, it doesn't matter if you vote yay or nay. All right, yes. And Jordan? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Bonnie. Th thanks, everyone, for pointing out the um, corrections. Appreciate it. Um, okay, so our next agenda, I just, my little time to report. So um, I will just, uh, let's see, I will, first of all, let me start off by the tree warden. Um, so the poll, remember I, I spoke to you at our last meeting and the previous one about the Turkey Hill Road um electrical uh, utility installation for that singular uh single home so um tomorrow night in front of city council there's going to be a poll petition presented for approval that actually uh, moves that poll to that other location that i talked about so we were going to hopefully avoid um, a large amount of public shade trees uh removed um the count i don't know exactly what the count is I think National Grid is waiting until the poll petition is approved, and then I'm going to hopefully meet the arborist up there, and then we will go through, um, we will reconvene and actually get a count. Um, but I expect it to be a lot less than what they were originally anticipating. Um, so with that said, I'll just keep you posted. I would imagine that public shade tree hearing will probably happen sometime in April, I would think. So um we to uh this over this past well pat last week we had obviously some very heavy winds uh for an extended period of time so we did uh have some tree damage uh we unfortunately lost a pine tree um that uh, demolished a garage uh and did some damage some other property damage we lost a few um larger limbs that damaged some property fences etc and we did have outages um but some of the most of the outages were related to private trees falling in the public right-of-way so you know we were able to clean everything up pretty quickly we had our contractor uh for our emergency tree work uh on site the following day and then we had some public works crew as well out there sort of doing a mop-up operation so so that is um so we're secured from that um from that event at the moment um we also uh, removed all the ash trees on Ice Pond Drive mm -hmm. this week. So there was 13 trees that were removed. I believe it was yesterday or the day before. Um, so we are, I'm actually, I have a, uh, a dig safe put together and I need to finish up the trench permit aspect of it so I can get the utility marks out there so we can start to grind the stumps um, and then prep for um, our planting in the in the spring uh and in well it's next month actually but we'll talk about that in another portion of the meeting and um i forwarded uh i did re uh as the chair i did receive some emails from uh two residents regarding the main street uh picture main street um i forwarded the information to um donna and then it was forwarded to the mayor's office they their public records requests so Donna's the public records request officer for the, for DPW. So she is um, has answered both of their public records requests. Um, so that's also been uh, done. Um, uh, other than that, uh, oh, I did finish our Tree City USA application. I think I, I don't know if I told you that I I did it a while ago, and I don't think I mentioned it at the last meeting, but that is done. Um, we are in line for our uh, annual Tree City USA award and another growth award. So, which is which is great. So, um, we are per capita expenditures. I think we're around the thirty three dollar mark. I didn't I didn't have a chance. I wanted to print it out today, but I didn't have a chance to do it. But I believe it's so we went up slightly um, from from last year in our per capita uh, expenditures on tree work in the city. Not, not not a great amount, but, you know, we we also kick back, obviously, in our tree planting um, program because we're, you know, we're, our, our tree planting numbers because we are in the process of sort of, you know, continuing to uh, to re um, readjust that based on everyone's new roles. So, but we're going to be well represented uh, 
at our Tree City USA Award by getting both a growth award. That's year eight, I think. That's great. Yeah. Yes, uh, Mom. Quick question. When you say, did you say it's $33 per capita? Yes. Does that mean per person or per tree? Per person. So we spent $33 per person. In I, North I believe, I, I believe. And you, ask, you ask me this question every year. And I, I do. Don't, I don't think I ever really give you the real right answer. So before I, I don't open, remember asking it every year, but okay. No, I, I'm just I'm messing I with you. Do. Uh, I probably uh, do. Uh, you might. I don't know. I will look that up and I'll send you all an email. Um, because that's actually I have to I have to ask myself the same question because Arbor Day Foundation makes up the Tree City USA um, awards and all of these state urban foresters. So in our state, it was like Julie Coop. Molly Freilisher and other state foresters all work with Arbor Day Foundation to create the platform and actually capture, um, you know, like the questions about the type of work that we do, you know, uh, what our budget is. Do we have an urban tree? Do we have a tree committee, a tree commission? Um, they also rewrote the whole growth award application. So the growth award application has been expanded. It was done like two years ago. It was expanded. Um, and it actually really is great because it, and we've gone through the growth award in the past, but we have the ability because we have so many moving parts and we have such a great support network. We have the ability to capture a lot of, um, a lot of that growth award um, qualifications. We, we pass muster with flying colors. So before they did that, it was, it was difficult for a community that didn't have like an active tree planting program or tree tr uh, tree training or tree trimming program um, to actually get the growth award. So they've expanded it in the hopes that communities will apply for it and actually be um, successful in obtaining it. So um, I'm really proud of that because this is eight years. Let's see, how long have we all been together as a, in a, as a group really since 2015, right? So we're approaching, this is our ninth, this is our ninth year. Well, our first meeting was in uh, 2016, I think. So it'll be May 2016. So we're in our in our eighth season. So we've had a growth award every year since we've been working together as a group, um, and uh, along, along with Tree Northampton as well, and all the other volunteer organizations that have helped us along the way. So it's great. So thank you, Molly. Don't ask me any technical questions. No, I'm just go ahead. It's just another question. I'm just yes. always full of questions. Um, okay, it's all good. Um, to get the growth award, do we have to spend more each year per capita? Per person no year before no no you don't so for th this year we um we we got points from professional development uh we've we got uh, a large portion of points because we planted more trees than we removed um we've got points for the um tree uh the tree pruning or the tree training that we're doing with volunteers so those are three of the things that i can think of off the top of my head and there was two other categories so it's only it's only ten points you have to achieve, and we were well over the ten points with all the categories. So, uh -huh. um, so I'm not sure exactly when the Tree City USA award is going to happen. It usually happens in June. It's probably going to be in the eastern part of the state. It might even be on the Cape this year. I'm not sure. So I'm waiting for Julie Coop and Matt Cahill to get back to uh, get back to me. If we get it again next year, we should have some kind of big press release about the tenth year. In a row that we got. Uh, yes, I, I I would agree. The tenth year of the growth award. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, what, I agree. Hmm? what was the total budget? Um, does the budget include salaries like your salary? And yes. Yes. So all so it includes. Yeah, it, in, it includes all salaries, all any work that's related to um, any tree, any tree maintenance, any urban tree maintenance. We do any. Uh, it includes all the volunteer hours uh, uh -huh. and it, it includes all you're allowed to include equipment rates you're allowed to include um, um like bonnie's time gets included um you know um uh, people that make uh, folks in the office that may make trench permits their time is included the um so it's it's everything and basically it's sort of like uh I have to extrapolate it because our budget is designed our budget is built for forestry parks and cemetery mm -hmm. um and we don't necessarily have, it's um, everyone is lumped in one PS. So I have to sort of extrapolate the numbers of how many hours 
people spend based on a percentage of doing X. Mm -hmm. And then I have to back into the new um, pay rates. So it's a little bit of a process. I have a workbook that I use. Yeah. Thanks so, for doing all that work. Yeah, you're, you're, you're welcome. You, if I, someday I will do it on time and I'll have it done on the 31st of December. So <laughs> state's always been very kind to us. So I, they don't give us a hard time. Um, but I definitely don't want to be, I don't want to get in the bad side of our state partners. So, but yeah, I, I can actually get you the per capita question and get you a dollar amount uh, in an email. I'll send that out to everyone. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Uh, any questions? Okay. No questions. That's good. All right. So we are pretty much, we're doing, we're doing well. We're on time almost. Okay. So setback tree planting program. So I will just want to make a couple of comments. So I, I have, I have the setback. I took the setback tree planting program brochure. I happen to be having to meet with the, the sales uh, rep from Marcus printing that does um, some printing for us and has done printing for us in the past has like printed our brochures and printed our door hangers, et cetera. So I um, met with, met with him on another issue. And then um, I printed out the brochure and I asked him if, you know, if I could give them to this as a PDF, would they be willing, to, would they, could, could they adjust it? Could they do whatever they said? So they could do whatever we want with it. So what I did is I sent him, um, I sent him the brochure. And so what I would need from all of you is um, some comments. And if you're willing to spend the time looking at it now and making the comments, I can have them make the draft changes. And then, and then we can look at, look at them, look at them at our next meeting. The other thing I asked him is um, his name is David. I asked David if it would be possible to create um, a pocket door hanger um, that we could slide this brochure in. And he said, it is possible. He said, the other thing you could do is you could create um, a door tag. So this, um, you can see it, I think, sort of, kind of, right? So this is just a black and white, right? So what he's saying is they would have a door tag that would stick up here about three or four inches, maybe, that would be attached to this. And we would just have this trifold brochure hung off the door. And then when someone wants to read it, the tag stays on it as part of it. Um, the other way of um, the other way of actually doing it would be to create a, a door tag that's like another panel on this side that would have a keyhole, a stamped keyhole to hang over the door handle, and then um, you could also uh, just rip it off, sort of like a sticky pad. So that actually. Um, Gave me a little bit of pause about thinking about potentially if we're going to do go go that far, would we actually put the um, agreement in here as well? So if they decide if they decide they want to do it and they want you know they still want to talk to us or you know someone from this group or someone from True Northampton, they would rip it off and they'd have all the information, and it's easy enough to do. So those are just a couple of things to um, those are just a couple of things to think about when we're when we're talking about this, but I sort of want to get the language in here um, squared away first so we can review this maybe at our next meeting. So we could sort so of- should, How do you want to do this? You Should we each just send you a numbered list of change suggested changes? I, like I, it's paragraph either, one change- It's either name, that or if, some, if somebody's willing to put this up on their screen and you want to go through it line by line right now, we'll go through it line by line. It's entirely up to all of you. Okay. We, have a, little, I... we have a little chunk of time, right? We have like, yes, 20, I, I 20 gave minutes. I'd yeah, say I... like, let's, cause there isn't actually that many changes. I don't think like we could do the bulk of the text and not get like hung up on the checkbox thing. We can save that to the end, yep. you know, and do whatever we can, yep. but there's not, if somebody can share it, we, um, I, I found we, it. Let me, I think we could share. amend. Sure. So that would be great. And Rich, are you just going to take notes? Yep. I'll it? take okay. I'll take I'll take notes. Yep. Because I'm going to end up sending this mock up. Let me just get a red pen. I'm going to send this mock up to um, the printer. And I'm not going to find a red pen. Mm -hmm. 
need to use a black pen. Okay. Okay. Black Panel pen. one. Okay. This, we're doing the inside first, or do you want to do the? Okay, we'll do the outside first. That's more logical. Okay. Everybody good with this? Clean air, reduce storm water yeah. runoff. Any updated languages, language changes? I think it's okay, personally. That's good, okay. Panel two. A uh, quick comment, I think stormwater, not to be too nitpicky, but it's, it's, I think it's one word. Okay. Perfect. What about, um, do we wanna say anything about, you know, like cooling effects in the summer that can help with, you know, um, air, reduced air conditioning bills or something like that? Oh, I like that, Molly. I think that should be front and center. Yeah, I mean, that's a big reason why I have the sugar maple outside my house. Right. It provides shade. What can we get rid of so it doesn't get cluttered? I think you could just say provide provides shade. That's funny that that's not even on here. Um, yeah. What what I, about what about if we said something like reduce urban heat island effect, or or yeah, that's a little too, that too might be a little technical. What if you reduce temperatures? Because shade, people are like, oh yeah, shade's nice, but the reality is, you're really decreasing. Like that's a huge thing from for climate change. Is it actually can reduce temperature, you know? Mm. Surface temperature, you know. I like reduce temperature. Uh, reduce. would we have to? I don't think we. I let's. If you like everything that's on here, I can ask them to actually just reformat this a little bit. We could also the last one. We could just say enhanced recreation instead of those other two lines yeah, too. Take out such. Take out the such as part. Okay. Then we could just add one more line at the bottom for uh, reduced temperatures or whatever. So what if we said enhanced outdoor recreation? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's good. All right. And then. Then we get a line. Yep. Okay. And enhanced outdoor recreation. And then you want to just say reduce air temperature? I, I would just say reduce temperature because it it reduces the temperature of the air it reduces the temperature of the uh, how about, how about the reduce pavement? reduce summer temperature mm. or summer heat yeah oh reduce summer word. heat that's yeah good. yeah yeah reduce oh, summer yeah. heat that sounds good yeah that's good so the tense is reduced Storm water runoff. Mm. Yeah, they all should be past tense, right? Well, well, they're adjectives, reduced or adverbs or something. Yeah. Enhanced, improved, enhanced. Yeah. Reduced summer temperatures. Yeah. 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 Why, reduced, why? No, reduced summer heat. Reduced summer heat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Or should we use instead of reduce some word like that means like relieve or like mm. I don't know. That's even better. We need a poet. <laughs> you know, like a word like relieve, like a synonym. Mm. Um Re I mean relieve um, or um you could say relieve relief from summer heat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Re yep. Relieve or relief. I guess we just do relief from summer heat. Yeah, mitigate is good. mitigate is a word that's sometimes used well, in this context. Yeah. That would be good. Mm -hmm. Mitigate, yeah. mitigate. I would try to stay away from long words. Oh, protect. Mm -hmm. No, not protect. No, I mean I think either reduced or relief or relief. Summer let's, heat. Let's go with relief or relief. Relief relieves summer heat. Okay. Again, we can 
We can we, change the tenses. Yeah, yeah, we can also get all these changes made and look at it, mm -hmm. see it visually and see how it sort of like all just sort of drills down. That's all. Mm -hmm. We could just put reduce summer storm water runoff, you know, um, yep. enhance property values, improve sense of well-being, enhance recreation. What's the title on the on above the trees? What why plant shade trees? Cleaner air, reduce yeah, you don't need the ED for that. Yeah, nope. reduce stormwater. Yeah. Healthier ecosystem noise buffering. Yeah. Okay, so just reduce. Reduce, you could mm -hmm. say enhance property values. Mm -hmm. Well, you could I don't know, enhance or you could say cooler it's summer streets. Oh, what? Mm. I like relief. Yeah, I do too. I yeah, relief I from summer heat. A little yes. more dramatic. Mm -hmm. We're all concerned mm -hmm. about the heat. Okay. Right. So, so relief from summer heat. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. If you're looking to save a line under the city of Northampton tree warden paragraph, I'm um, just saying if, if you need extra room, you could say instead of a tree warden manages, you could say tree wardens manage, and that might keep you on that same line without the extra two at the bottom. Mm, I like that idea. Less words. Yeah, I actually, I actually, I, I don't really think I need, I mean, I, I'm, I'd actually like to remove the 2019 mass tree warden year. That can go away. Mm -hmm. That's sort of like past tense that happened. I mean, we're not, we're mm -hmm. sort of done. So really it probably ought to say, yeah, the tree warden. Um, and maybe my name is charged with managing shade trees on city property, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With, uh, city property, uh, and within the public right of way. Yep. Um, and actually, yeah. that's really not correct. The tree warden is charged with managing trees, um, within on within the public right of way and city park yeah. system. That's all. That's MGL eighty seven. Oh, I don't, removed. I don't. So I don't manage all the trees on city property. Mm, right, right. Like your, like your, you know, schools, school property. Um, yeah, or the water department. Right, or the water, or the city's watershed, et cetera. Right, so I don't do any of that. So I think I'm just gonna, if you're okay with it, I'm just gonna rework that paragraph, and I'll mm -hmm. just do. language um, for yeah. our next meeting. Okay, all right. So I'm just gonna sort of fix this up, make a little note for myself. Yeah, it should align with um, what MGL, what you know, yep. the state. Yeah. Official yes. Okay, so and you could put at the last paragraph, the city of Northampton's tree warden is appointed by the mayor, blah, blah, blah. Then you could say the current tree warden is Richard Parsley. Okay. Or just in the first, or just in the first See line, it's up in the, the tree beginning. warden, comma, your name. Comma, yeah, sure. Is okay. charged with or manages shade trees. Yes. He'll, or Richard, whatever your wording is yeah. going to be. Yeah. But you could get rid of that is charged yes, with. There's a lot of extra words. Yep. So the right. the next uh, bolded line should read Urban Forestry Commission. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And do we still have seven members? Is that? We do. Okay. And I believe that this text underneath that is correct and aligned with our mission statement in yep. the charter. Yeah. And the meetings have to get changed. Commission meets yep. first and third Wednesday of every month, 4.30 to 6, not 6.30. Yep. Mm -hmm. And by Zoom. I think, I don't think we should put that in there. I think what Just we should. leave, period. Sorry. Well, I, I, yes, I, I think we should make a little line in there um that says you know visit the city's uh website and an agenda center for ah oh, perfect something of that, I'll I'll something of that nature right so in the second 
Uh, so I'm going to get rid of that because we may, you know, there is going to be, um, we may, I don't know what's going on in the, on, at the state level in regards to yeah. like hybridized yeah. meetings because we're, yeah. we're not hybrid. So um, the city council, for example, chooses to meet hybrid. So mm -hmm. they get Zoom and they also, but all the counselors are present in council chambers. So I, I'm not sure if there's going to be legislation to change that, but there might. So we may have to meet you know, in a hybrid form. So, but I, I don't want to, we, that if we have to meet in a hybrid form, we'd probably have to go back to city hall or we'd have to go back to city council chambers. Look at Molly. There has to be technology. Yes. To yes. record and to, yes. to um, view the people who are hybrid. Yes. It's really hard to do. We've tried, I've tried to do that in another committee I'm on and me too. It's a bummer. <laughs> Yeah, so if you just work out put a period after PM and then find your wording for okay, uh, city's, city's, agenda, city's city, agenda center, city of Northampton agenda center. Yep. For details. Okay. And then should we have the public comment period part? Uh, I don't think um, don't think it's really necessary. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a public meeting. Right. It'll yeah. be and it'll be on the agenda. Yes. Yeah. Right. In the agenda center. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. The next tree Northampton. Yeah, I think that that's all good. If you want to be really technical about it, you might put an apostrophe after the S in citizens. Okay. <laughs> Does it have to say nonprofit, or do you want to not? <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't think so. I think they can go and find out about it. I think the main thing is that it's private, that it's not part of the city. Mm. It's a private citizens group. On the other hand, private makes it sound like only certain people can be in it. Like it's a family or something like that. Hmm. That's an interesting. But point. at the bottom it says to get involved. Yeah. Um, okay. I, mean, that's I think the clarification is that it's not part of the city. Yeah. Yeah. I think that the private really emphasizes it's private citizens, not <laughs> all everything above is. City, or you could city, say. City. I mean, no. Go ahead, Molly. Sorry. You could say a private nonprofit group. I mean, yeah, you could. You're right. You could say Tree Northampton is a 5013C. Right. Exactly. Not non nonprofit group promoting ecological stewardship. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Right. And that was where you. I mean, that's what Tree Northampton is, right, Sue? It's a 5013C. Yeah. yeah. I think you should say that. But it's kind of um, clunky. I thought it was more streamlined to just say private citizens group, and they can go find out what it is. I think, but people know what a 501c3 is. Okay. And not only that, but maybe you'll get some donations. Right. I kind of like the word citizens, though. Mm. But I, I, I don't have, you know, it's that's not a deal breaker for yeah. me. Yeah. I think speaking from Tree Northampton, we liked citizens. We liked private right. citizens group. You should go with what you want since it's your yeah. Group. <laughs> yeah. Let's go I'm, with, I'm, let's leave that the way it is. Perfect. I think we put a bunch of thought into it when we did it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm I'm all good. And, and Sue, the, the link in the email is still good. Treenorthampton.org. Yep. Or email treenorthampton at uh, gmail.com. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Okay. Now um, we have City Seal. Yeah. Is everyone okay with the photograph? Yeah. It looks nice. Where well, is I that, like by it. the way? That is Route 66. I thought so. Yeah. Near that chicken coop. Yes. Used to be that right. chicken farm. Yeah. Yes. Right. The old the, the old Nuttleman property. Yes. Ah. That tree is still yeah. those trees are species sweet gum. They're still hanging on. Oh, uh, good. But doesn't look oh, as they're nice gonna as, be stunning. I, well, I hope so. They're if, in rough there it's a rough place. I think yeah. that I think the ground is like super compacted i think that's uh, the biggest it is because the road used to go straight so the road used oh, to go straight oh. 
And what they did is they realigned it in order to um, create, uh, to get rid of the blind curve that was there when you used to come up to uh, King ah. Cole. So, yeah. And they had to build a retention, uh, they had to build a retention pond on the other side of this. Like if you're driving straight mm -hmm. by, it's right. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. but yeah, it is, it's hard as a rock. When yeah. Robin said the holes, it was like pickaxe. Yeah, I, oh, woo, it was bad. Yeah. Nice picture though. Okay. All right, so I I work on the little part about the city of Northampton tree warden thing, and um, I'll add the uh, city of uh, the um, agenda center. Okay, perfect. And then the next panel, left panel. Yep. I think that's lovely. The setback yep. tree. Yep. Yeah, it's a nice tree. Yeah, yeah. We, we ought to we ought to put a before and after picture. <laughs> oh yeah. These, these trees are huge now. Oh wow! Yeah. Huh. Um, I did have one. I I do one one thing. One thought is that uh, number one. Um. I think what I think this this setback this setback uh, fill out the setback tree request form. The the website is like clunky. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I think what we can do here is two things. One, we can just put this the the website link where this sheet is. And then at the recommendation of um, um, Dave from uh, Marcus, we could just put a QR code in here somewhere. Oh. And huh. that actually would probably be pretty snappy. And then we could also, we could also do a QR code for Tree Northampton on the back. Okay. Oh. So if people wanted to volunteer and they want to just go quickly look at the website on their phone, they could just Very good. The camera. And so oh. we'll have to get a QR code that goes to Tree Northampton. Huh. You might say, um, fill out the city of Northampton setback tree request <laughs> form. And and you can find it here. You can find it here, right. Yeah, which might be the web, the actual web address to the page it's on versus the Google form. And with a QR code. Okay. But do we have enough space to do a QR code? Don't they have to be a certain, like, one inch? Uh, they, actually, they can be pretty small. Oh. Yeah. So we may we may be able to. He said we could resize this. It has to be. This um has to be. It got it got shrunk to fit this eight and a half by 11. So this sheet, in reality, like when Alicia would probably print it out in the beginning, it was probably like uh, an 11 by what, eight by 14 maybe? or maybe an eight by 14 and then we shrunk it instead of making it so it's a, a just a trifold mm -hmm. so they they said they can they can work with us to fit these things in there if we want so okay hmm. great so I, I was thinking of that if you're okay with that i'll ask them to we'll get yeah. okay. um if you still want to keep the language about the tree warden's response to the form where it says get in touch with you, you could say contact you. Yeah. Yeah. And that that's another thing that I, I actually think we should probably maybe you could say fill out the setback tree request form to you you'll start, be notified to start us. Uh, site visit schedule or hmm. you'll be okay. notified about next steps perhaps or something like that yeah because i don't so truthfully speaking i don't finalize the permission agreement form they use they get mailed to me and they're already finalized by um well like rob did them or like christina um has agreed to help out so it's going to be coming from someone else in essence it's not that i don't want to I'll do it if people ask me. Yeah, that's what I was trying to think of something neutral, like fill out the set, start by filling out this, this um, setback tree request form. Um, and, and you, then, and you will be contacted. Yeah, something passive. Mm -hmm. You will be contacted for a site visit. Yeah. Yeah. Typically, to arrange a site visit. Yes. So that means that when the Google uh, sheet gets filled out, so when you use the QR code, you go directly to the Google sheet, which is an infill document. And then that populates the spreadsheet that's behind it, which um, 
Mm. I think Sue and Jen both have access to, or maybe yes. it's just Sue. But it, it was that. Go does ahead. that get dumped directly into that tree tracker tab? No, no. It, I have to manually move it. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, okay. so like when someone, when someone fills out a, um, when someone fills it out because it's a city form, I get an email that has been filled out. Mm -hmm. So then I would go to it and see who's in there and then see what their request is. But in the past, uh, Alicia, Alicia had direct access to that and now Sue does. And so when, any, when it's, um, I don't, Sue, you don't get an email when someone fills out that form, do you? No, I don't. Okay, so, okay, so I get the email, so that might, I think we're probably going to continue it that way, but I just have to make sure that um, you're contacted, you or Jen or Christina, if depending upon how you would want to handle that. Right, um, I'm putting them in the tracking sheet, and then Christina is in charge of that tab on the okay. tracking sheet, okay. so I just checked it, we don't have any new ones, the last one was in November. Okay. Although somebody looks like somebody added Andrew Kuthler. I'm not sure who that is. Okay. But that's up to date. All right. So I think number three, we just, I guess I'll think about that. And like people call my, no one's called me for on the phone for a setback planting honestly in like eight years mm -hmm. I it should probably just be you will be contacted yeah about to schedule a visit yep a site visit get rid of three and then two northampton volunteers will notify you when your tree is available well i think the difference is in three it's telling you you have to whoops sorry you have to fill out uh 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 permission and agreement form so the setback request form is different than oh oh, uh, oh 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 right you know what i'm saying so somewhere you have to fill out setback agreement form and submit yeah. it so maybe that's number three is submit your submit your your permission and agreement form right and then the volunteers will notify you when your tree's available and schedule a date. Okay, so right, because number one, it says the tree warden will get in touch with you. So as soon as you fill out the form, I as soon as that QR code is fill, hit, someone fills a form out, line one, I get an email. And then it says here that I will touch base with you. The tree warden will touch base with you to schedule a site visit. And then number two says during the site visit discussion, location and species of trees and the expectation of the resident to water trees regularly during the growing season. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm okay leaving it this way and then just making sure that when I get an email from someone, it gets turned around to whoever's the volunteer representative, which I guess would be Christina at this point. Christina's coordinating people going out and talking to the right. residents. So I so I have to I have to tell Christina that this is a request. Here it is. And let me know how like how I can assist you. Can and you then, just forward her those emails? I can. I can. I mean, that I might be the simplest. We could just give her a heads up. Hey, this is the way we're doing it. Or you know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, and they're all gonna land in that response sheet. Yeah, when uh if you've if you've obviously most of you probably use like a Google form like that, when you get mm -hmm. an email that says thank you for filling out your Google form. So that's sort of what I get is the email. I get a notification from Google yeah. Form. There's something in there for me to look at. I don't get the exact email. So I have to go into the form like everyone else, extrapolate the data and send Christina the email. I don't I don't think you need to do that because we have the link to it in the tree northampton gmail okay. we just check it from time to time and see if there's any new submissions if you wanted to that would be fine you could forward them to christina and she could you know know that there's some okay. in there she she also has access to that i think okay that's but, perfect so the first one you could just say fill out the setback request form and it's going to have a qr code so that's going to change the whole layout yep 
and then um it should say you fill out the qr code and you will be you will be contacted to schedule a site visit yes or yeah yeah. Q, the, yeah yeah fill out the request form to to start scheduling your site visit or and you will be contacted for a site visit that's good yeah yeah and I think number two is fine. Get rid of the number three. Yeah, you don't. I mean, it's well, nice. Number three, can... number yeah. three is uh, make sure you uh, complete and submit the whatever the name of that form is, the setback agreement form. Yep. Finalize the permission and agreement form. I mean, sometimes they do it right at the site visit, you know? Yeah. But sometimes I think they get, I don't, I've never dealt with them. So I think sometimes Could they it get. actually spent. say sign and notarize? Uh, that, that's um, too I, much. I, mean, I think it's probably too much. I don't think yeah, you need to drill down much. into that detail. I think you could just say finalize the permission and agreement form. They'll find out later what that is. There you go. Well, it kind of goes into it in the next column. It it it, it elaborates. Yeah. Right. Oh, good point. <laughs> All right. So finalize the permission agreement form. Perfect. Which includes species choice, which in, you know, and species choice. That's fine. Okay. Four, Tree North Hampton volunteers will notify you when your tree is available and schedule a planting date. Five, Tree North Hampton volunteers will come to plant your tree and you're welcome to come and help. Access to a hose or spigot on planting day is greatly appreciated. And yeah. we would also like coffee and donuts. No, we can't put that. <laughs> this is recorded. I'm sorry. That's I'm having a slip of the tongue. Excuse oh, me. Oh, they do. Lots they, of people uh, do. <laughs> um, okay. All right, so I can just sort of like re reword. Does, does anyone want to take? Does anyone would anyone like to take on that text for me, one through five, and just send me blurbs that they? Th I mean, I'm taking notes, but I it would be helpful if someone just also did that. I don't know if that would that would be helpful actually. Because it's actually nice to it's nice for me to see perspective from someone who's not a tree warden or someone who's outside, mm -hmm. just because. Um, not that I can't do it. It's just I think it would be helpful because I I do think there's like, this is a little confusing for me. Like one through five is like the tree warden does basically, one through three, but I really don't do one through three, and I mm -hmm. haven't done one through three because of the system that we have, which has been in place um all this time so i mean i think we you can just leave it if it, if you're okay with it i don't think you're the tree warden needs to be in there like it's somewhat you know just a human being is going to contact you you know I mean, we don't have to write it that way but yeah you know no but I mean? I, right yeah but you will be you will be contacted to schedule a site visit during the site visit you'll discuss yada 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 right right um, right uh, to, okay, uh, I put it in a document. I'll work on it. Okay. All right. I copied and pasted it into, into a, a word, a word to well, Arson. Okay. Max version of pages. Okay. And I'll just put the text in an email to you. All right. Perfect. How okay. about the definition of a setback? What is a setback tree? Trees planted within 20 feet of the right of way are available free from the city of Northampton. Through the setback tree program. Trees planted further off the street suffer less exposure to wind salt. Setback trees provide beauty. I think that's good. Walkers and bikers, calm traffic, enhance. Enhance. Should it say enhance wildlife habit? Habitat? Or, or habitat? I'm sorry. Yeah. Habitat or, is general because it's, is I it think people, I think it's a human. Okay. A yeah. human habitat. Because it could be insects, it could be yeah. You, know, you don't have to say wildlife. Yeah, I think little okay. people. All right, never mind. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. 
Okay, so everyone's okay with that uh, text? Yeah, that, I like that, especially that last line is really good and very okay. um, time appropriate. Okay. Wait, they, they mitigate stormwater runoff, decreasing the risk. I see a flash floods of protecting our rivers and streams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The permission and agreement form is a notarized document that gets filed at the registry of deeds. I think the sixth or so line down where it says his, her, I think we could substitute there. Oh, yeah. Yep. Get with the times here. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. Okay. My children would be in favor of that. Okay. <laughs> I have a just a small thing. Should it, registry of deeds should be capitalized? For, I think. Ah, well, agreed. But yeah. then, so the yeah, but then a big question about this whole setback trifold is that um, there are six panels. Could it be reduced to four? I mean, wouldn't that significantly decrease the cost of printing, given how many will, will have to be run off? Well, um, maybe it's late in the game to be raising that, but I think the picture and the the checklist of benefits that trees confer could be omitted really without losing very much. You mean the panel with the Y plant shade yeah, tree? Yeah, the Y plant shade trees panel and the picture, well, I like them, obviously. Huh. I think they're really nice. The whole thing is nice. But if if the goal is to convey information efficiently and inexpensively, I think it could be a four panel. Piece. Would that actually be less expensive though? Because it would still be one sheet of eight and a half by eleven paper. Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I can ask that question. Mm -hmm. I I think, think. Yeah, you ask them, and you think sure. that that's a budget concern. By all means. Yep, I I totally think it's yeah. You know, I mean, I basically said he asked me how many I thought we would want to print. I had said five hundred. Yeah. Just, um, Which is a small run, really. Yeah, 500 small, is a small run. Yeah, so I mean, I, I mean, that was just a guess. I wanted, you know, he, but I. But I think it's plenty. Well, it is plenty, and I, I ran like uh, I ran off quite a few of these on my office over the years, and I think Sue, you might have as well, in order to supply like the uh, table tabling event at City yep. Hall, et cetera. So, but David, that's uh, actually that's actually a good point, and I can ask. Obviously, I, you know, I don't know if it's based on the amount of text also, you know, the cost is based on text, but um, huh. they're all questions to ask. Yeah, Tree Northampton <laughs> has made batches of these at different points. Okay. I think the, yeah. Actually, in Mass General Laws needs to be fixed. It should say Chapter 87, Section 1. That needs to be reversed. So... The chapter comes first. Chapter comes first, yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless it was section one of Mass General Law, chapter yep. 87. Um, and actually, it should say um, Tree Warden, uh, it, says it also grants permission for the Tree Warden or their designee to enter your land to prune water and care for the tree, not your the tree. tree. Exactly. Yeah. A tree, right? Because we're filing yeah, a, right. a city tree, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you just signed it away. <laughs> no, this this wrong with this form already. No wonder why we don't have no. I'm just... <laughs> do you think? Um, what was I going to say? Um, oh, do you think we should say anything to just make it clear that this is a permanent? You know, you know this that this agreement will succeed your you know, carries on even after you're not living here anymore to that effect. If you're, anytime you file something at the registry of deeds, that's it, you know? I mean, if it's at the registry of deeds, you have to like do something almost with a lawyer to change something at the registry of deeds, you know? So I, I think anyone who has purchased a house, you know, which people who, whether it's a landlord or a, citizen um is going to know that you know i don't i don't think i don't think that's just my personal opinion i don't think we need to mm -hmm. explain that but i think that makes it clear too that if you're especially when we capitalize register of deed registry mm -hmm. of deeds 
<laughs> the, the that, reference um, that because it says it shall be a protected public shade tree under provision of law so it's on the deed or or you could say something like i mean maybe we don't need anything at all like this but you could say something like the tree will continue to be um cared for throughout its lifetime be cared for by the city throughout its the lifetime or something like that the reference to your tree is also in <clears throat> the four and five in the left column as well as the text heading below so it seems like an important distinction oh yeah yeah, yeah to be consistent right good point right that's a good catch okay. when the tree is available what was the other one, Jordan? Four and five. Uh, what happens at yeah four and also okay. five and what happens after my tree is planted? Oh yeah! Wow. What happens after the tree is planted? Okay. Mm. All right. A little bit more into that column too. Walk around your tree. What was that, Jordan? Um, DPW employees will pick up any debris, mulch around oh. Oh. the tree. The tree. The tree. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and now comes the water bag question. Yep. Like, do we want to? Oh, I don't know what to think about that. Why don't we just say? employees will pick up any debris mulch around your tree stake if necessary and water the tree but that's not really true though yeah because you're asking the residents to water your fill the water i mean we could are you are you thinking about using those tree diapers on all plantings or we could install water bags just on the res on the setbacks um we could but then we got to make sure that we really truly have a commitment to we'll fill a water bag mm -hmm. so that's the only thing and how and about the PW employees will pick up any debris mulch around your tree and stake if necessary. The city. Now I forgot my train of thought. Uh, the city will water the tree. Is, mm -hmm. is the question? The is the question? Away. Sorry, sorry. No, go ahead. Is I've the question it. whether the city will install a water bag or whether we're asking residents to fill it twice weekly? We haven't been using the water bags as much. We've been using these other devices. Oh. Why don't we just leave off the part about the water bag and just say, and stake if necessary, we ask residents to water the tree twice weekly. Well, so I, as somebody who's filled a whole bunch of those water bags, you know, it's they're twenty gallons. Mm -hmm. so you, you're really asking a resident to to provide forty gallons of water a week, mm -hmm. which is a lot. That is a lot, and a lot of people are con concerned about the cost of that. It sounds like a lot, but Rob figured it out, and it's less than five dollars over two years. Mm -hmm. It's just a couple of bucks, but. People think, you know, it does yeah. seem like a lot of water. You don't really see a lot of the water you use. <laughs> no, and I and I think, you know, I also think that if we're not going to use the water bags, then we need to abandon the request to water them. You know, the only way that I would see us using water bags, if these, you know, A, if the tree diaper experiment doesn't work, first of all. Second of all, if the tree diaper experiment's going well, because we have, a symbiotic relationship with the moisture that is available and we end up in a situation where we have a drought you know we have a, a period of a long period of time where there's no um rainfall and the soil the, the the top layer of the soil horizon is completely dried out then we would have to install water bags probably and then water yeah. them but i would leave the tree diaper there mm -hmm. I, would, okay. I, wouldn't, That's I wouldn't 
much info. It is. I'm, I'm, I'm not suggesting putting that on. I'm just giving right. you hypothetically right. like operationally. So basically what I'm saying is that if we're going to use the tree diaper, I don't think the water bag should even be on here. Right. Maybe it should just something like the city provides some water for trees, but um, asks that during hot summers that um, you augment with regular watering for the first two years. Something does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like very vague, but to, to express that the city does water the trees, but they ask for citizen help, especially during hot. If I was asking for a setback tree, I would want to know, you know, what what is going to be involved with me, like. How right. much is how much work is this going to be anyway? Like if I have to water it um, twice a week, you know, with a hose, it's going to take a hose, and it's going to take like how did you say twenty gallons each time or something? No, that can't be right. Yeah, it is. That's yeah, right. 20, 20, 20 gallons, gallons each time. You know, that's a a significant ask of people, and um, I think they should know ahead of time what um what they're getting into. But maybe that could all come out during the meeting with the tree warden. You know, I don't know. It's, maybe it's state in, it's in here step, that we. No. Oh, go on. It's, it's in step two, and expectation of residents to water trees regularly during growing. Oh yeah. Okay, so well, there's a discussion. You know, there is a discussion. I mean, we the bottom line is people are asking for these trees, and yeah. this is the way I think about it. People are asking for these trees, so they're interested. Mm. and they're getting a free tree and they're getting free installation that's hundreds and hundreds of dollars mm. you know so it so should I, maybe I, just... I don't think i think as a partnership with citizens i don't think it's such a big ask i yeah. mean i know our water bills are going up i like i hear you david like that's that is real you know but i don't think it's that big of an ask for an interested citizen who just got you know kind of a big gift to water it hmm. yeah i, I mean that's maybe, the way i think about it so I would maybe agree, put I, I would agree. oh i'm sorry well i would agree but i also think the more specific we can be about to molly's point the expectations the, the more fair it is to the people right so. How about if we say in here that the dpw employees will pick up any debris mulch around your tree and stake if necessary you are asked to water the tree 20 gallons a week for the first from May to September, the first two years. And then when we're talking to them, we can tell them we do have water trucks. You know what I mean? Like just set out in here that we expect them to water it. Like Jen's saying. Right. But again, what are they watering? They're water. If we use the diaper, they're just putting water on the ground. Yeah. They're not actually putting it in a bag. So I I'm all, I'm almost and I totally I hear what Jen is saying and I I um there should be an expectation that if you've got everything basically for free I mean in essence they didn't they didn't get it they did get it for free but in essence in order for us to put this tree there they had to give the city something in return and what right. they gave the city was the the um they're hosting this piece of public infrastructure on their right. property. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's like yeah. a symbiosis in a relationship. Right. So, right. Right. We, if you, you wanted the tree, we'd like you to water it, but we're not, we're not, we're not going to come over and you're not going to get a ticket if you don't water it. So I guess my question is, is that after we say um, DPW employees will pick up any debris uh, um, and uh, any debris and mulch, uh, mulch the tree and, and stake and stake if, Stake the tree if necessary, however that reads, period, right? Yeah, period. The city, the city installs a tree diaper, a watering a watering device called a tree diaper, period. Um, okay. during, during severely hot summers, DPW may also augment this regular water, um, augment this with a regular, uh, with a water, with a water bag filling. So that's when I would just say that if there happens to be a water, like if there's a water bag on the tree, on top of the tree diaper, that's when we probably would need help from the resident to water it. So that's sort of how I think it should read. Um, 
And I don't necessarily want to say tree diaper either. I want to think yeah. of another term that talks yeah. about like tree watering, yeah. like uh, like a tree watering ring. That's you know? better. That's better. Oh. Moist diaper. A moisture yeah. moisture retaining ring. Or slow yep. release watering bag. Slow uh, release. Slow, that's good. Slow slow release. Okay. Let me um. Are you all right if I uh, like try to wordsmith this with? Definitely massage that. Okay. But I mean, so then basically there is over here and two, like Jen, like you were said before, like Jen said, you know, uh, the expectation of the resident to water the trees regularly during the growing season, you know, um, we might just, we might just leave that in there. And then we're having this conversation that, you know, if a water bag appears, um, you know, we'll, we'll, if you see a water bag out there, if you can water it, please do, yeah. you know, basically. But I don't think we have to say that in the brochure that could come out during the site visit when they mm -hmm. talk. With you. Yep. Okay. But I, I also feel like, um, you know what, if I didn't know about trees and I said, uh, expectation to water trees regularly during the growing season, I might think, oh, you know, maybe once every week or two or something like that but if it's twice a week i don't know it just feels like more of a commitment i would want to know we could develop a simple you know quarter page or whatever just a sheet to hand out during a site visit mm -hmm. you right. know that says you know this is this is the deal with water, you know, whatever we yeah. put on it about watering. It would be a really simple tag that talks about aftercare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Right? After, yeah, like yeah. Aftercare, you know, like if the tree looks like it's doing poorly. Call. You know, if your email, tree is injured, call. Yes, yeah, email the tree warden or whatever, you know. If, if a water bag shows up on this tree, Please give it water if you can. You know what I'm saying. So it's, that's a good idea. You know that. Yeah. So, that's, so it's sort of like when you, you when you're buying an appliance, right? And you go to, and you you have to fill out the the warranty part of it. Like this is sort of like the the warranty sort of. Mm -hmm. your, like mm -hmm. if you leave the hospital and you get instructions on what to do if this or that happens. Right. Yeah. Right. After care, after yeah. visit care. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So may, maybe maybe we could look at uh, just wordsmithing. This what happens after our tree is planted, and and also number two, and then actually make an aftercare type single piece of paper or document. Just or something. a little thing on a bright colored paper. Yep. Right. The other thing, if you if you remember what we had is, do you remember like a like quite a while ago we made those tags that were made out of um, that water the plastic and they were had zip, they had poles punched in them for zip ties and we had them hanging off the trees and it said, you know, there's, this is, this is an emergency. This tree needs water. Yep. Please mm -hmm. water yeah, I it. think I used them all up. The ones I have, do you still have a box of them? No, I, I don't think I have a box. I have a few, but that is also something like we can hand out. Like, you know, if, if there's a water bag placed on this tree, please follow these instructions on this, on this tag. Yeah. Right here. You mm -hmm. know, if, if you can, if you can't, let us know and we'll do our best to get it filled up. It mm -hmm. said like emergency tree in danger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Help water this tree. And we'd go around and we'd put them around. Yes. On the trees. All right. I'm just, we're way over time, but I, I'm, oh. getting, I'm okay with it, I guess you're okay. No, I mean, it's good that we're kind of going through this, I think. Um, But I have a, uh oh it's 5 48 oh my goodness yeah. yeah okay so the the bigger so everyone's okay with me just like we'll words we'll wordsmith this too and have something for our next meeting mm -hmm. okay. Some quick comments about the trees um sorry i just dropped the um oh want me to bring it back yeah. that's okay um sure for, for a second yeah please just a couple quick comments I find it let's see thank you yeah so i didn't mean so oh. i didn't mean i didn't mean to take it down i just wanted to let everyone know what time it was. that's all sorry jordan 
Go ahead. Yeah, no, it's all good. Um, I don't know if we're going to stick with the, I don't want to get too far afield, but with the cultivars. Um, so winter king hawthorn is a great tree. If we can't get winter king, would we not be substituting something similar? Um, all that to say, you know, why don't put just like maybe hawthorn. Um, oh. Do you want to make a note of that, Rich? Sure. Just say hawthorn. Yep. Similarly with ginkgo, if we want to call out um you know cultivars that's cool magyar is um still typo it's m-a-g-y-a-r oh gosh you're good should we just say linden and have it once yeah i think that's good i do too i don't know about the cultivars just because um you know in the past we've like tried some cultivars and thought they were going to be really great and then they didn't overwinter you know, mm -hmm. like especially some of these yep. uh, trees yep. we're trying to that are on the edge of the um, of our hardiness note zone. Blah. It just gives us more leeway to have it more broad. If we choose mm -hmm. cultivars that are a good price, that are readily available, that we know we're going to do well, that's awesome. But why limit ourselves? We just put the yeah. species down and so then like we can go from there. Bald cypress tulip, hawthorn, um, one sweet gum, get rid of the other sweet gum, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And get rid of green spire. Yep, Lind yeah. just keep Linden, um, Don Redwood, Princeton. So you even put American uh, Elm or Elm, right. Elm, Elm Hybrid. Elm Hybrid. That Elm Hybrid, would that be all right, Jordan, you think? Yeah, Elm Hybrid's an Elm cultivar, so because they're going to be all selections. They're not going to be species. Okay. Okay. Um, Could it be Hornbeam? Oh. Well, the American Hornbeam's the native one. There is... um. What is that called? English hornbeam? Wait, no, that's not what it's called. It's yeah, a there's a few. Yeah. Yeah. A few. Yeah. I mean, we could just say, we could just say hornbeam, and then depending yeah. upon what, what is what site we're working with, we yeah. could plug in um, European American or a cultivar, one of the one yeah. of the two. Yellowwood. I didn't see that had both hornbeams on there. Kentucky coffee tree, London plain tree, black gum, ginkgo, red blood. What is the other gum? No, uh, rubber tree. <laughs> oh, Euphomia, Almoides. Oh, yeah. hardy rubber tree? Hard, hardy rubber that because we're getting rid of a bunch. And There's I also think sour they... gum, which is a beautiful native, but we could go, this could go on and on and on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, service berry is something we've planted. Yeah, service berry is actually a setback tree that we've given to quite a few people. We don't have to list everything because it says right. what, yeah. kind, right, what right, kinds right. of trees. So we can add other ones too. Good no, point, Molly. Yeah. Okay. Are we so, getting rid of that special request offering? Other line? Yeah, we were going to get rid of that. So get rid of the other line? Yeah. Can you yeah. scroll it down, Sue? Oh, yeah. Do we want to have special requests? I think folks are really interested. They might uh, just say, hey, I, I just saw this cool tree. Can you guys, like, they don't need to be invited to have a special request, but, you know, like, oftentimes folks will just volunteer, hey, I'd, I'd like blah, blah. Yeah. Like, I'd like to sit at that table at the fireplace versus the table in the corner, right? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if you open the door, it could be a whole lot of, you know, yeah. conversation that doesn't necessarily need to happen and resources. Right. Okay. Okay. Stop share. Everybody. And we're going to leave on that last line, right? Tree yeah. be, Oh, we were going to say, um, there was something we we're going to add to that. Tree will be various due to season. Oh, site. Um, site conditions. Yes. And what is in stock at planting time? Yes, yeah. I, I agree with that, Molly, for sure. Site so tree availability yeah. varies due to site conditions, season and site conditions? Or well, what is season? What does that mean? I don't Who know. Some, um, some trees we can only plant in the spring and so, or, oh, or, cool. or like we don't plant any tulip trees in the spring. We only plant oh. in the fall. Oh, right, right. Or vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, sorry. Yes, thank okay. you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, David. And a, a, you, you know, I've missed a few meetings. You all might have talked about this, but what about a checkbox for just native shrubs oh, 
I think we did talk about that. We have a list that you and Jordan, I think, made up or Jordan made up. I think what we oh, tell me if I'm wrong here, but what I remember is that we said we're going to try to do shrubs as a pilot project to start with to see if we can really kind of do it. Um, yep. So I don't. So I don't know if we want to put it on this as published. We could talk to people about it. Yeah, I actually went back to my notes and we were going to put Princeton Elm. We we're going to change it to Accolade, but we're just going to see Elm. Elm or Elm, Elm Cultivars. Elm Cultivar, okay. Yep. Um, also, where it says what is in stock, you, you could think about just saying availability. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We talked about Ooh. saying maybe other plant. And it, should maybe... Say tree, it should say tree species varies due to, due to season and what is available. Yeah. So it's a disclaimer for the whole list. <laughs> We're not promising any of these. And due, we could due have to season site conditions and season comma site stock availability okay mm -hmm. all right all right david did your question get answered oh i'm sorry uh yeah thanks thanks for checking i think mostly it did um uh i would just note that this isn't like i mean this is just a graphic to illustrate what's available Right. It seems at, at some level low stakes to add something, even if it's just part of a pilot. But I'm I mean, yeah, we, we I'm, could I'm comfortable either way, obviously. So I mean we, we could print, we could do a, a short run of what we have, mm -hmm. just use up the stock, and then we could actually, you know, push the pilot program at the same time. And then if it's successful, we can just make another run of these and actually put it on the bottom. You know, it's 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 entirely. Mm -hmm. to, I mean, I'm I'm flexible either way. I just I don't want to. I, I guess what I'm concerned about is if we put something on there now, and we're not prepared to actually delve into that. Mm -hmm. That's that's my only concern. I don't want to tell people we have something or want to give them a choice of something that we can't get. Yeah, I think that's a good point. My experience with the um, whip giveaway is, if you have something like a crab apple or lilac there's just a run on them. People just come and they want them all and they want as many as you'll give them and they run out really fast. And um, they, you know, they want those little sh colorful things and it, it steers away from the, like the bigger right. trees. But then when we get to somewhere and we see, Oh, we could do understory here. Then we would sort of introduce the idea of, Hey, would you like some understory plants? We can get a few of these. But well, I have doubts about whether the understory would would compete with the trees, especially in a really dry season. Yeah, that's also I, I don't know if it's really a good idea. Oh. So you're saying it would be competition for nutrients. Yeah, and water. water, especially water. Water, yeah. Potentially, yeah. I mean, that's one of the big things we've always talked about when they're doing new streetscape designs, when you know they're including perennial plant material um, that absorbs the water in the first few inches of the soil horizon, you know, as soon as it gets in there. But, mm -hmm. Oh, um, it doesn't get to the tree. Yeah. Yep. I mean, unless there's a big enough planting area that there's enough volume or it has the right type of soil um, soil profile or soil horizons. So, but got it. Um, it's seven. It's a uh, six. Sorry, five fifty eight. So if if you all are okay, I'll I'll work on the portions that I picked off on here, and I'll try to just pull all this stuff off, put it in a Word doc, and just sort of wordsmith it. And then Sue, if you want to take a look at what we talked about, um, the numbers. Yep. 
and yep. then um, maybe I could get because uh, I could uh, Marcus printing can do a draft for us to see that I could share very easily at our next meeting, I think. And then we'll go from there. Super. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um, that gives us about two minutes to talk about spring planting and Arbor Day. And um, now we have one minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> Make it fast. Okay. Uh, so uh, seedlings are ordered for the Arbor okay. Day. Um, so can you stop sharing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Spring uh, spring planting. Um, Jen and I uh, met uh, today to just talk yeah. about uh, the um, or, or getting some stock in the inventory, opening up the nursery, et cetera. Um, and then Jen and I basically are going to go back and review the tree availability list from Chestnut Ridge and um, Amherst Nursery. And then we're going to reconvene when Jen comes back from vacation to do. We have to do a few site visits, too, to some of the locations um, that we're going to be planting as well. So um, I'm confident that we can actually pick off the tree stock as we as needed to get us rolling for the spring um, that the nurseries have it um uh, they have the availability we need uh, so you know again i think uh okay. one thing i will say jen i don't want to speak for you but i will you know my takeaway was that we're still sort of like in um realignment mode mm -hmm. we're still we're still actually it looks like you know we're another year of we're just gonna we're gonna move along we're gonna get um we're gonna work with new people for the like uh, tom bassett for the dig safes um christine's gonna help with the setback so we're gonna have another year of where we are just focusing on getting people in these uh, volunteer positions that are willing and then working with them and planting trees, but just not as many as we have been accustomed to in the past. You know, if we make a 200 this year, I think that would be phenomenal. Do you know where they are with the pruning? Um, they have uh, one rich parish went away on vacation. Uh, I, and they are doing some pruning at village Hill and I think they'll be pretty done. They'll be wrapped up. Pretty you know soon. if they're on track because one of the yes. reasons we yes. talked about slowing down the planting. Yes. I think he said 450. They'll be over 450. That's great. Uh, yeah. Rich, do you know when the the I need to contact the high school I just realized about the um bagging the tree whips? Yep, April so, 20th. They should be delivered what? April 22nd or April 23rd. Delivered uh April. Okay, great. I'll take care of that. I'll contact the science teachers again and see if we can get okay. that done with the high schoolers. Okay. And that's great. And then um, April 20th and 21st date and rain date for the rotary. They've, they've crafted a press release. I haven't done the city one yet. That's still on my to-do list. Um, but we'll be getting the press out for those events. Okay. Perfect. And can we and, have this? Oh, sorry. No, if you if you need help, Jen, if they can't do it, we'll we'll organize a work party. Yeah, I'll I'll let you know. I I just realized. Whoa, I got to contact them. <laughs> <laughs> um. Also, uh. Oh gosh, I just lost my train of thought. Oh boy. Um. You started off with we can we have and then. Oh, can we have this? Um. Thank you. Can we have this as a agenda topic? like one in the, you know, a bulk of the meeting, just yep. because uh, yeah. we talked about like possibly doing mulching and tree rings at Cooley Dickinson yep. at, to, as an overflow project to keep people busy on that day. So sure. we just need to have somebody, you know, we need to organize that and get somebody to, okay. how are we going to do it? We're, you know, stuff like that. Who's going to be there? Yeah. You know, and and the, at some point I'd like to, Talk about you know JFK as a, a potential planning site. Mm -hmm. um, mm. is, is it is that something this commission wants and the Rotary Club can handle? Could it be an overflow? Did you get my email? Uh, yeah, David? I did. I did. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We can be in touch when I get back. You know? Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of potential in the front of JFK. Who makes the decision about that? The principal of the school. Principal and the yeah. school maintenance director and the new they have a new school grounds foreman. And the superintendent has to approve it. Yeah. Uh, 
Oh, it'd be great to put trees in that circle that just sits there empty. Yeah, it would be great to put some trees right in the front where people walk in the sidewalk. There's no shade. There's really zip there in that section. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hmm. The overhead wires are on the other side of the street, actually. Hmm. Oh. There may be some guidelines around visual to the windows. I know some schools had to remove like plantings by the underneath the windows. Hmm. So in case of emergency. In case somebody was hiding in the bushes or something? No, it's like active shooter stuff. Oh. Yeah. But yeah. So well, so I we... it's just something we may I I don't know whether it would matter at all, you know, visual from the I, I don't know, but planting trees in that circle. I mean safety uh, first. Yeah. Well, well, I don't know if if that is part of it or not, but just that may be a piece of mm -hmm. being able to plant in that circle i'm not quite sure somebody knows <laughs> yeah oh yeah somebody knows. I don't know who. Somebody well, knows. i'll i'll basically have both of these items on the next agenda again because we want to right. bet uh, the yeah. new language um and then we'll just and, let, and then i'll just you know if there's something else someone else wants to talk about i'll just reach out to you before i didn't i'll reach out before the next meeting but that that's it for me, unless anyone else has anything not anticipated by the chair. Just one quick for Jen. Um, I will go and get the addresses on Ryan Road for possible planting sites. How, yeah, wide, does, how wide does a tree belt need to be for planting trees? I mean, the tree belt between the sidewalk and the road. Mm -hmm. I mean, we I mean, the, we did some pretty narrow ones on Trumbull. We planted some of those. Uh, honey locust there but what would you say rich like at least two and a half three feet i mean it's got to be at least three probably, probably three feet and then you need to have a uh, soil volume you know that extends both left and right mm -hmm. six feet in each direction to ryan see. is a, a busier many... street than trumbull so maybe there's more like snow plow disturbance that might get thrown up i don't know but that's okay. You can just, if you just give me the addresses, you know, I, or there's a couple other people who do sighting trees, we can just go by and be like, you know, let's say the tree belt's big enough, but we have to choose a really salt resistant species. You know, that's, you don't have to figure that out. You know, it's just helpful for me to have addresses rather than. All right. You know. But I'll go with a three foot sort of guideline about the tree belt width for right of way. Yeah. Tree. yeah and the, the other thing too, is that it just, Thinking of the three foot is that we also, my experience with the, they're going to be in years to come, they're going to start working on sidewalks, which they're already starting. So we have to be uh, cognizant of the fact that if you have a sidewalk that's 48 inches wide, uh, it's not ADA compliant. Oh, wow. So we have to make sure that we have enough soil rooting volume and there's enough room in essence for potential sidewalk improvements. That's just something else to think about. So mm -hmm. you're saying 48 feet is what it needs to be for no, they, they they're 60, they're 60 inches technically by law, they're 60 inches wide. Oh wow. Yeah. But I know for a fact that some of the places will never be 60 inches wide because of pre-existing conditions. Wow. You know, like Carlo Street. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, and I think that's again, you know, that's another um we planted a lot of trees, and so we have to make sure the, the trees we planted, we protect the protect mm -hmm. them because they are assets. Wow, mm -hmm. sixty inches—that's that's a lot. Yeah, it's a sidewalk panel width of a sidewalk panel. Mm -hmm. And how far from a driveway? At least nine feet. Yeah, I would use like nine to ten feet away from the end of a driveway. Same with a hydrant, um, utility poles too. You don't want to plant them too close to the utility poles. You typically wouldn't, but sometimes utility poles like dead end, the wires dead end and the wires go in the ground, but you want to have enough room away from the pole so they don't have to worry about line clearance in the future, things mm -hmm. of that nature. Mm -hmm. So if you have quite Molly, if you have any questions, just, just give me a call. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. All right. Any other, any other, uh, um, business not anticipated by the chair? 
Any questions before we depart? All right. Um, could I have a motion to adjourn the meeting, please? I'll do Bye. that. Quick draw. I have a, <laughs> that was Molly. There's a motion. And Jen, are you seconding the motion? Yes, I'm seconding. Okay. Yes. All right. A motion is made and seconded um, to uh, adjourn the meeting. Uh, all in favor, just raise your hands, please. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. It was great to see you all. Uh, Jen, um, have us, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.